On the Radio is brought to you by Zurich Insurance, the perfect place to catch up with all things Melbourne. If you enjoy this content and want more inside access from the team, make sure you visit the club website. Gary Pert's been good enough to join us for Kieser, struggling with back pain. Now's the time for Kieser. A few of them might be struggling with a little bit of back pain. I think a few of them had their Christmas party barefoot bowls on the weekend. Cheerio to all the Kieser staff out there. You're doing a great job. Gary Pert's on the line. Welcome to you, Pertie. Great to have you on. Good day, Dwayne. Good day. Oh, look, it was a fantastic day to see over 30,000 D supporters all happily sitting there singing the song and, you know, celebrating with the players. And as you said, Goody and the coaches were there. It was a celebration of the whole club. Purdy, I, I love the, the crowd watching along. They knew the result, so there wasn't the anxiety that you'd usually get watching the grand final. They were almost cheering before a goal was kicked. What was it like in the atmosphere? Take us through that. Well, it's the perfect grand final, isn't it? You're only sitting there with uh, Melbourne supporters. You've got no other supporters from another club hassling you. You know the result. As you said, the uh, they watched the whole four quarters they were cheering and screaming in the last quarter like it was the first time they'd seen it, but they were all commentating when the goals were coming up. So it was pretty well the perfect day, and they got right into it. And then afterwards, when the players come out, the uh, the whole MCG erupted. It was uh, as an amazing day. You got any merchandise left? <laughs> no, we, uh, we've certainly sold a lot, but I, I think it's fantastic because... I, You know, so many Melbourne supporters, uh, you know, we make the finals, we make a grand final. And I think they looked around and said they don't have a lot of apparel and merchandise over the years. So they've all rushed out. And the best thing is we just sell out continually of all our kids' range because all the kids are coming back and and they were everywhere um, yesterday and getting photos with the cup. And that's really important for us as a club to be rebuilding those kids coming back after the recent success. So financially, what's it done, Purdy? Like, can you put it into a, a figure for us or in a, into context? Well, I think this year it's simple to do because we're at best going to break even after being, you know, smashed by COVID again. Um, but we'll announce a profit of around of, uh, $2 million. So wow. we see that's a direct result of uh, the finals and the, and the premiership. And, and I reckon it'll add probably another uh, couple of million dollars to our um, financial result next year because we'd expect, you know, the membership is, is going really strongly. And I think we're going to have some pretty big blockbuster games. So, again, that's always... Uh, great for clubs when we get the crowds coming back to the MCG. So it, it has a substantial impact. And Purdy, it is nice for the fans to be able to actually grab hold of, touch, feel, shake hands, get a selfie alongside the players. You, back in your day, were playing in the days when I think the fans could still run on and pat you on the backside whilst you're running off. There seems to be, in recent times, a bit more of a distance put between fans and the players. We don't tend to have or haven't been able to have those Sundays after the grand final win, the family days like we used to have. So it is nice that this opportunity still exists for fans to actually get together with players side by side and kind of feel part of it more than we have for a couple of years. Yeah, there's no doubt the fans love it, but also the players do. Is, is You know, I know that the players, when we won the premiership in Perth, they all said they couldn't wait to get back to the MCG to, to be there with the supporters and they were interacting and mixing with the, the supporters all day. And, and they really enjoyed it. And, and you would have seen from social media that they were there with their families for the first time. Because, of course, in Perth, there was only 75 of us. So to come back, have the kids, have the families and friends with the players, this was their first chance that they had to reconnect as a group as well. And um, so they had a fantastic day. And I got some amazing messages from the players afterwards so the supporters loved it but the uh the players were exactly the same big cheers for the players as you said but the the star of the show there was only one and it was that man neil danaher uh neil danaher yeah he got a standing ovation and i don't think there was a single person in the thirty thousand that didn't have a tear in their eye he was up there and he was part of our formal presentations and simon goodwin got up and gave him a huge big hug and the and the crowd went crazy but um 
you know, he's a really important part of this club. He's talked to the players over the years. Um, he's got a really great connection with them and, and Goody loves uh, being around him. So, you know, he was really important and to have him up there with David Meeks and, of course, the supporters got to hear from Nathan Jones and Neville Jetta who retired. So all of, all of those special moments, we wouldn't have got at a normal um, grand final. So we wanted to make sure that the supporters had moments they'd remember for the rest of their lives. Is it somewhat of a, a full stop on it? I mean, because things move so quickly and, and players back to training and now you've got to defend the premiership, which is even harder maybe than winning one. Yeah, I think in the big formalities, um, it was definitely a point that we're all working towards as a club. But the, the Cup will continue to be on tour. And as you know, it's it's travelled all around Melbourne, regional Victoria. It's it's now, as of tomorrow, I'm taking it up to Sydney and we'll be uh, taking it to our interstate supporters. So the Cup will continue on tour, and and therefore every time the Cup rolls up, there'll be some sort of celebration. But Mm. for the players, they're pretty clear. They start pre-season today, um, and their minds are focused. And I know uh, Goody's going to have a big session with the players and staff to reset their heads for our next campaign, for our next premiership. Um, But as a club, I think, you know, the, while the Cup's on tour, there'll still be an enjoyment of that. Um, and that'll keep on going until people don't want to see the Cup and they've all had a photo. <laughs> and uh, any time soon we'll find out about the new Gosh's Paddock home where the Cup will reside, Purdy? Well, uh, they've put a big fence around the Oval as of uh, yesterday. So we start um, digging up the Oval and turning that into an MCG size ground, which is a critical element, as you guys know, we've been training for many, many years basically on a junior football oval. Um, now for us to be on an MCG size oval by the time we start uh, the season next year, that's our first step. And then uh, by the time we get to that point, hopefully we're a lot further down the track with the state government and the AFL on our broader facility. I've seen the designs. It looks magnificent and um you know, that's progressing and it'll be worth the wait in the end. And round one, the grand final rematch. Um, how do you feel about that opening up the season? I think it's terrific and I guess you'd just be encouraging all the Dees fans to back up the truck and buy the memberships if they possibly can. <laughs> you know, we'd love to see everyone just completely fill the MCG. As soon as we won the premiership the next morning, I rang Travis Old and said, mate, we... We owe it to the Melbourne fans, to uh, for both clubs, the Melbourne supporters and the Bulldog supporters, to replay this game in Melbourne. Um, I think it'll be a huge crowd. We'll unfurl the flag and make it, you know, something really special. But these are the sort of things we want to be part of. This is a club now. We want to be part of the blockbuster games. We want to be uh, filling the MCG on a regular basis. Um, it's a really exciting time. So should the grand final rematch always be the season opener from now on? Well, I love the idea of it because already you've got the players talking about it. You've got the supporters excited about it. The the clubs of the two teams, um, you've got the whole pre-season to be excited and focused about a big clash um, to kick off the season. So, look, I, uh, I love the idea of it. Um, this year it was really appropriate for us to do it because we were forced to play the interstate grand final but I'd love to see it every year A couple of texts coming through on the temper text uh, for you Purdy, when's your BNF? Uh, so we've got that on the 17th of December um, we've got 1500 people you know, filled the place there and be coming along and um, again that's always a, a special event for us where we said to the supporters that in, instead of just having an online best and fairest straight after the season We wanted to wait until uh, we could share it with the supporters again. Um, And the earliest, that's been 17th of December. And like I said, 1,500 people there and we'll hand out all our awards. Nicely done. And Luke Jackson was a player who wasn't able to be there uh, yesterday. He's in his home state of Perth. When do you expect him to return? Well, you know, we've been sort of day by day reading the border restrictions and the ebb and flow of that. Um, And we want... Jacko to be able to spend that time with his family because once the season really kicks in, we've we've had uh, you know 
a lot of restrictions on the movement, the interstate movement of our players. So Jacko will be back, I'd say, uh, straight after Christmas, but he's training very hard. He's on a very tight program over there. Um, but, you know, the, the border restrictions have been a complication for our Adelaide and Perth players, and we've tried to work with that. Purdy, great to have you on. In a word, uh, because we're out of time before you go, who does win your best and fairest? Who was your best player this year? Uh, we'll have to find that out. I'm not really sure. That's why I'm so excited about the seven piece. <laughs> Got an opinion? Who was your best player, you think? Oh, look, it could be Christian Petrarca. I thought Maxi Gorn was fantastic. Uh, Clayton Oliver's got to be right up there. I think there'll be four or five players that'll be uh, within votes of each other. So it'll be way too close for me to guess at this stage. <laughs> Great to have you, Purdy. Always uh, fantastic to have you on. Congratulations on your season and your day yesterday. Gary Pert joining us.